Hello folks, before this episode begins, I'd like to put a disclaimer out there. This episode's a bit of a mess, and I apologize for that. The monster I thought we were going to fight today in this episode wasn't the monster we ended up fighting today in this episode, and plus, I didn't expect to necessarily explain the things I had to explain for game mechanics and everything like that. So my apologies if everything seems shambled and a complete utter mess, but that was completely my fault. Um, I hope I make up for it at the end, but yeah, I just want to let you guys know in advance that this episode may be a bit of a mess and that next episode we will more than likely be back on track and i feel that we will so just wanted to let you guys know before we hopped into this thank you again for watching and i hope you enjoyed the video man after our long and tough battles it's really good to just take a load off sometimes isn't it what is up, people? It is me, Monster58, and welcome back to another episode of Monster Hunter World. In the previous part, we ended up taking down the final boss of Monster Hunter World Iceborne, the dreaded Elder Dragon, the very large as well, Elder Dragon known as Shara Ishvalda, and unfortunately fainting two times to it because I'm an idiot. But other than that, in this episode, we're going to be taking on... This new assignment that the field team leaders got us wanted to do. So we're going to head back to Celiana. But one thing I'd like to do first is we are going to take on an optional quest. And I believe I'm going to go take now. a look. Let's follow Nergigante wherever it's headed. Yes. Let's go and take a look. Um, I'm actually not sure which one I'd like to do. Because I think it's not there yet. It's, it's essentially one of these two. And um, I think out of the two we're going to take on the Black Veil Valhazak. And so, with that, I'm going to head into this quest, I'm going to complete this quest, and we are going to see you guys at the end of it. Alrighty folks, with that all out of the way, and goodness, um, it was a little annoying because I'm just going to tell you when I'm recording this, Gamescom is happening live right now, so I was very keen on watching both the reveals for the gameplay reveal for Civ 7, as well as obviously the Monster Hunter Wilds trailer. By the way, I'm going to put on screen what they revealed, so if you don't want spoilers, go watch the trailer for yourself. I'll put the link to that trailer in the description. It looks like they revealed the next Flying Wyvern, which looks like an electric-based Flying Wyvern, which is amazing, and they revealed a spider monster, which was really freaking cool looking, like. Like, damn, dude, it looks so exciting. So, all right, with that all out of the way, let's talk to the field team leader. Serena is after for the Elder's Recess to find your Gigante. Yes. Let's go. So, I should have told you this before we hopped in. Grab water weapon, grab a poison uh, heal, because funnily enough, despite hunting your Gigante, you're not actually going to be fighting it today. Nergigante! 
All right, folks, looks like we have made it to an unknown area. Yeah, we haven't seen anything like this and some signs of what we know as a turf war, so I might run into whatever let out that roar. Absolutely. All right, folks, we are in an unknown locale now. So let's explore this place. While we're here, well, I, I guess I can't. I was going to pop up buffs and stuff, but I guess I, guess I can't right now. Let's keep going, though. Ancient forest. Ooh, looks like the Coral Highlands over here. Look at that area. Yeah, right? Goes right from the Ancient Forest to the Coral Highlands. Kind of wild. It's like a melding of environments. It's it's really cool. Yeah, and she, she mentions that. It's very interesting, like, how all of this melds into one. I think they did a really good transition right there. You can kind of see where this is going, I hope. Yep. We'll keep it moving here. Keep it moving. Hmm. Another loud roar, huh? Oh, looks like we got a carcass. Oh, it looks like Rathalos. All right. So we got Rathalos, Nergigante, got Basil Juice here. Got a really weird collection of monsters, but considering it's a Coral Highlands. Yeah. It's a good place to set up camp, but it looks like this is Core Highlands Ancient Forest. Yeah. Some uh interesting monsters can definitely appear. We have uh we can like considering what appears in the Coral Highlands can definitely get a mix of like Legion and Rathos. It's kinda wild, right? We've got a camp start time to start doing some research. Oh, by the way, about those tracks you found. They contain an odd type of secretion. I've never seen this in the New World or the Hinterlands. Maybe unique to this region, but um, and then there's whatever is making that roaring sound. Be careful out there, okay? Yep, so we'll head out so finally we can take buffs. Give me one second, folks. Alright, sorry about that, folks. Had to take a quick bathroom break. I've been drinking a lot of water today. So, my apologies for not taking my potty break before the frickin' uh, episode recording. But this episode recording has been going on for a fair bit of time, so... Alright, let's find the source of that roar. Um, here's a good opportunity if you don't have a water weapon, if you don't have fire-resistant armor, and you don't have poison stuff. Do that right now. Ooh, look at this area. Looks like we got a wild spider waste region. I'm just going to tell you guys this right now. This is one of the core endgame mechanics.
Alrighty folks, welcome to my favorite monster in all of Monster Hunter in terms of the series. I love this thing. Welcome to the Thunder Wolf known as Zenogre. I love fighting this guy, and I don't find him that bad, although I may be biased from fighting him a good amount. Although I do still consider him decently tough, like don't get me wrong, I've been knocked out by my fair bit of Zenogre, so it's not frustratingly difficult though. And those versions I was knocked out by were the tempered ones, so definitely this guy can be tough, but I don't find him ridiculously frustrating. It's weak to ice, neutral to water, resists fire and dragon, and is also immune to thunder. The tail is severable, and the head and the front legs are the weakest points as well as breakable this guy is quite large and agile so beware of that in addition he inflicts thunder blight so the deadliest part of him in my opinion just like all thunder based monsters is getting wamboed and stunned and then getting hit again the thunderproof mantle is highly recommended here he likes to spin jump and slam his either his paws or back into the ground and these attacks can hurt a lot for the for the spin jumps and slams, he'll do two or three in succession unless he's on his back. He also has this wild spin move, kind of like, um, if you guys know the wrestler Booker T, his spin a -rooney, it's kind of like that. He has a large hitbox, and it can definitely hit in a large area around him, so be very careful when you see that. His most vulnerable state is when he charges up with electricity. It's kind of like Kieran in a way, but he'll growl in place, and you'll see all of those bugs, like, enter his fur and conduct electricity. Um, essentially, this is the prime time to attack him, flint shot him into a wall, because he'll be sort of stunned in this animation for a good amount of time. However, he can also charge him himself up, kind of like a super mode. In this state, his attacks will deal more damage, and this is distinguishable when Zenogre's fur is glowing. Keep in mind, when he does this, electricity is striking around him, also like Kirin, and you can get hit by this. He, says he has other standard attacks, uh, standard attacks like side slamming, paw swiping, tail swiping, but nothing too crazy. Just again, be wary of that Thunder Blight stuff, and you should be okay. Um, I Again, do not underestimate him, but I also wouldn't say that this guy is anywhere near frustrating. Alrighty guys, enter into my favorite monster in the entire entirety of Monster Hunter. I'm we're gonna actually recall because I'm stupid. I totally fight we were, totally thought we were gonna fight a different monster, but um Zenogre happens to be my favorite monster in the entire game. Uh and in the entire series for that matter. So, as you saw in the um in the cutscene, this thing is electric, so you're going to want to bring thunder resistant armor. I probably put something on screen, and you're going to want to bring an ice weapon. So we're going to bring these two, and we're going to head out, and we're going to fight this thing. So, like I said, this is my favorite monster in the entire uh, entirety of Monster Hunter world. I have, in, in, in Monster Hunter, I have a Xenogre figure. Alright, oh. So, I guess, uh, we head back. I was expecting to fight it. Um, I didn't realize Farcastering back to base would have stopped it. But, um, yeah. That's totally my bad. I completely screwed it up. You can absolutely fight this thing right away. I just, I did not realize that that was the, uh... That was the, uh... What was gonna happen today. Wow, that's some story. Who would have thought a place like that existed? I know, a Rathalo is fighting a Diablos, and then there's an ogre joined in. When we were testing how high we could go with the airship, I remember seeing a strange mountain-like shape on the horizon. The Third Fleet wanted to conduct an investigation into it since they had no solid evidence of anything like that existing. But it looks like you guys managed to beat them to the punch. For what I'm hearing, that land contains regions that resemble the locales we've already, we're already active in. There's got to be something fundamentally different about them, though. We need to focus on gathering samples from bones and ores so that we can compare them to the data we already have. Understood. We'll get started right away. Was there anything else you noticed that was off? Actually, we found tracks that had a strange con uh, composition to them. Never saw anything like them in the New World or the Hinterlands. They're definitely from a monster, but I couldn't pinpoint what monster made them. I think I'll have the time to look into those tracks, too, if you want. Who knows, if we can analyze those tracks, they might lead us to something big, groundbreaking even. Understood. I'll leave that to you, then. Now that that's sorted out, the most difficult part is next. What the heck do we call that place? I think I got it, since you were led there by Nergigante, the Guiding Lands has a nice ring to it. All all right, let's get to cracking the mystery of the Guiding Lands. You ought to look into that Zenogre first. Oh, and don't forget, collect samples from bones and ores while you're all out right. there. You heard the lady, head out to the Guiding Lands when you're ready. 
Alrighty folks, we have reached the Guiding Lands. Now I honestly did not expect, because as you can see I was very much thrown off guard because I thought that the quest that we were going to fight right away when we got to the Guiding Lands was going to be completely different. So, my apologies for that. But in short, let's go over the Guiding Lands because we're going to have to go in here to access some monsters and stuff like that. And that's what we're going to be doing for the remainder of the episode. So essentially, now that we have access to the endgame area known as the Guiding Lands, it's about time to go over a quick rundown about what this place is about. To begin, this area is a conglomerate of an ecosystem consist consisting of every single area in the game combined into one. There's a forest, desert, coral, rotten, volcanic, and frost area. For the time being, you do not have access to the volcanic and the frost area, we just have the forest, desert, coral, and rotten. Initially, right, only releases with those, um, but the... With, with the original four, but the last two were added via more DL, free DLC. This also means that you can pretty much encounter almost every single monster in the game here, bar the raid ones like Kulv Teroth. So how does this work? Basically, each area has its level. This can go from anywhere from 1 to 7. They initially cap out at 4, and they're increased to 5, 6, and 7, with you leveling up and completing certain quests to increase those caps. I'll be sure to note which quests increase those level caps. To level each region up, you simply need to hunt monsters that appear in each area. You not only get extra rewards for breaking parts but these rewards are unique to the guiding lands monsters themselves when carved will yield items unique only to the guiding lands these materials are used to upgrade their specific gear so for example say you have a rathalos armor set or weapon hunting rathalos here in the guiding lands will yield materials you need to upgrade and augment that armor set and weapon into the really really thick of the end game you begin with smaller monsters but then can work your way up towards fighting tempered monsters elder dragons and even tempered elder dragons just like regular monsters these elders will yield unique materials unique only to here so this place is worth staying in for long periods of time this is all co all compounded by the fact that this has kind of like an endless expedition you can stay here as long as you want However, note that carding still yields you less reward, so it's still in your best interest to not get carded as much as possible. A couple of things to note. First off is signs of a turf war. You can find these on the ground, similar to finding monster parts. If you walk up to these and investigate them, you get an analysis notification in the top right of your screen. This analysis can be anything like a flying or brute wyvern all the way to an elder dragon. To complete the analysis, fight stuff, break monster parts, and carve them. You'll notice as you do this, the arrows will begin to color themselves yellow until it reaches the end of the analysis, in which then the monster of said species will appear in the field. Another thing about luring out a monster, it depends on what monsters you fought, you'll be able to lure them out in a specific area. This isn't only useful for sp farming a specific monster's materials, but also if you want to level up a specific area. Once you lure out a monster, you have to fight it more to be able to lure it out again. A tip here. Remember, monsters tend to show up in more than one region, so you can be strategic about what monsters you want to fight to help level up specific areas and make stronger monsters appear. This also means that since monsters have uh, appear in multiple areas, hunting one monster in one area can subsequently level up areas, but at a decreased rate. Each region also has bone piles and mi mining outcrops, and those items yield uh, those yield items unique to the guiding lands. You can also adjust region levels to compensate if you want one area to be leveled up instead of one area being high level in comparison. To to the other. I'm going to link some good videos below that discuss the guiding lines if you'd like to take a look at them as well as the wiki page going over it in depth. In short, you'll be spending a lot of time here uh, to really upgrade and augment the end game gear. Is it a grind? Yes. Is that the point of this game? Absolutely. So without further ado, I'm going to head to the guiding lines and see what we can find out there. So as you see, now that we're here, that analysis progress in the top right, that is that little indicator that tells you what monster can absolutely appear in the field. So just wanted to show that off. And as I hunt stuff, you'll probably see um, this uh, bar go up. So we'll definitely have that go up. Oh, as you can see, those are uh, unique Anjanath materials that we can only get here. Alright, as you see, with that hunt out of the way, let's see what materials we get. We should just get some of those uh, silver pelts. Fierce Dragon Mini Bone. Yep, these are new. I think I showed that off. Yep. And like I said, those are unique to the Guiding Lands.
So you can see, by the way, um, because we fought a monster that appears both in the Ancient Forest and the Wildspire Waste, it levels up both regions. Alright, hunting a Kuluyaku, you can see that we get those like colorful plumes, which again, those are uh, items that we cannot get uh, in normal investigations or quests. And if you've also noticed, the one thing I'll also point out is the um, analysis progress has increased. Oh, here we go. Here is a mining outcrop with unique stuff. You have decayed crystal, forest crystal, more decayed crystal, yeah. You can see that that is a unique mining outcrop. What you'll notice with the uh, bone piles is they're pretty expansive. They're rather large. They're kind of like... They don't look like the conventional bone piles that you would normally see in, you know, um, in any of the main areas, right? So, aha, there's a bone pile right here. So this is what they look like. I was trying to find one of those to show off to you guys. Mossy Great Bone, Mossy Great Bone, Crystallized Bone Shard. The one thing I uh, didn't mention is you're definitely going to want to level up the Ancient Forest first. And uh, the way to, and what you're going to want to get to it is level 3. Now to get level 3, we're actually going to show a quest that we're going to end up having to do off screen. But we're not going to complete that quest this episode. I will more than likely complete it off screen. So just wanted to let you guys know, but yeah. The other part of these unique materials that I'd like to point out is that these are very much materials also that will change going into the tempered monsters. So uh, you'll get things like if I'm getting these poison sacks right now, you'll get things like tempered something poison sacks or whatever, you know, you'll get something along those lines. So just be ready for that, because if you want to upgrade your gear, you're going to have to fight tempered stuff. Alrighty, folks, and to end off this episode, because of my absolute massive screw-up, I completely thought that we were supposed to find another monster when I realized that we don't. We are going to be doing an, a quest that will allow us to fight Zenogre, an event quest, because, like I said, I felt bad, so... Let's end the episode off with a quest known as Moonlit Howl in the Coral Highlands. Alrighty. Let's get ready and geared up for my fight with the fight with my favorite monster in all of Monster Hunter. Now, when it comes to this monster, bring an ice weapon, thunder resistant armor. That is what I am going to say. We should be fine otherwise. All right, let's head out. Now, what I'll say this is, if, if it came out before I did figure, uh, while I was doing figure reviews, I totally would have done a review of it. But I do have the SH Monster Arts Zenogre, because that thing is sick, man. It's so cool. Um, and I just love, you know, canines as animals. Um, you know, from wolves to uh, coyote. Like, they're, you know, like that family, like... Obviously, coyotes can mess around with, you know, animals and stuff like that, like your pets and whatever, and that's really awful, but I do like wolves. Like, wolves are cool, and as indicative of sort of his design and his name, or, well, the title of the quest, uh, Zenogre is very much a uh, wolf-based electric wolf. You know, he's an electric wolf, essentially, right? So, really cool stuff. All right, let's find this guy. Looks like we have another Thunder friend in the uh, in the locale with uh, Mr. Fulger and Janath. Now, what's nice about us fighting Zenogre now is uh, Zenogre, uh, the cool thing about Zenogre is that this is the other, one of the other monsters that's a gateway into extra Thunder weapons and Thunder armor. Um, I find Thunder to be relatively hard to come by until you get into the later stages of the game in terms of an element. So it's very nice that we have access finally to hopefully, uh, I mean, hopefully, no, it's guaranteed that we have access to actually getting some much better Thunder armor and Thunder weapons uh, with Zenogre here. So where is this guy? Just wondering if it's over this way. Aha! Hello there! All right, everybody, let us fight. My favorite monster in all of the series. All right. You howl away there, bud. I should hit the wall. Oh! Huh? Okay. 
that was BS, wasn't it? Like, that had to have been dumb. Like, like you guys saw that, right? Or why can't I grab? Just trying to grab that. Oh, wait, no. I don't want to grab all onto that part of the face. Okay. I'll say the scary version of this thing is when it's tempered. Tempered Zenogre is very scary. Oh, I should hit the wall, yeah. If that doesn't hit the wall, I'd be really, like, annoyed. Uh, let's go for the tail. It'll definitely help out. Um, this guy has some pretty large range with his tail. Because it's, it's really long, as you can see, so... Okay. Uh, let's see if we can... Should be able to grab this, and then... Alright, let's do this. Not bad, actually. Didn't intentionally do that, but it ends up working out, doesn't it? Oh, thought he was going to hit me, but I guess he was still technically blinded there, so... Oh, ow. Come on, come over here. I want to see if I can mount this thing. Yep, not going to let him charge. So, he's still not necessarily fully charged up. Now he is. Now he's charged up. There's the full charge. There we go. That's what I wanted to. Going here. Looks very cool, by the way. Like, I love how this guy looks. It's a really freaking cool design. I just absolutely love it. I love this monster because it also shows you the limits that y the human imagination can go to when they're given, like, free reign over creativity. Like, a, a thunder wolf like this? Like, this is a cool way to do a wolf, isn't it? Uh, I ne damn it! I was like, I was waiting for it, but I he did a way later than I thought. Oh, there's his like back slams. There's one of them. Let's see if he'll end up doing those like triple slams because he likes to do those too. Okay. Ow! Ooh, that's scary. Oh, come on. Oh, this is scary. Those hurt. Those hurt a lot, by the way. I'm just going to heal up. Rather be safe than sorry. Oh, I didn't think that would hit. I'll be on. Oh, I got stunned. That should be fine. Even if I get hit with this strongest move, I should be fine. Oh, a little stun there. He's going to jump there. Nice. Oh. Ah, oh, stunned. I was hoping I'd roll over it. Didn't mean to grab his. Oh no, it's wrong side of the face, man. Nice. Should hit the wall here. Nice. He does have a really weird, like, sound when he falls over. It doesn't sound very canine-y, but... Oh, he's already angry. Okay. Not bad first cycle. Could have been a bit better, but overall still pretty solid. Now, I fought this guy a lot, so... But at the same time, I'm also screwing up a good chunk of stuff. I haven't fought him in a little bit, because I'm obviously focused on doing stuff for the Let's Play. So I hope you guys can forgive me for that. But I have fought this guy a lot, so I know what attacks do what, at the very least. Alright, let's keep it going. So he's going to be pissed when I walk up here. Let me see if I can put him to sleep with the Sleep Toad, because he'll get baited right over here. Yeah, I think he'll get baited to this. What's up, bud? Come on, come over here. I kicked it. Nice, yeah, yeah, he's got he's he's gotta get slept here, yep. Nice. 
nice. So now he's not angry. That's the good thing. That's the reason I recommend you. Oh my god, ow. Oh, that's not good. Oh, Mew coming in clutch. Or not coming in clutch. I'm just gonna try and heal. Jesus. Just need a moment to heal. That's it. Now you come in with the heal. And I've almost killed my... Oh, man. Come on, man. Oh, and Fulgar Engine, that's here, too. I gotta get this guy out. Oh, wait. I didn't think these guys had a turf war. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I didn't think these guys had a turf war. Um, this is one I didn't remember, or I didn't run into all that much. Okay. Anjaneth, please. Alright, I guess Zenogre's heading this way. They're heading opposite ways, which is good. Okay. So Zenogre is not angry anymore, which I'm very happy. And we got some free damage on this guy, so I'm A-OK -okay with that. Yeah, again, I'd like to apologize for screwing up, like, that beginning part, because totally, like, I didn't remember that it was Zenogre that was the first monster. Oh, and he's angry already. Okay. Nice. I still have a lot of damage to the tail, though. Oh, come on. I'm just going to do this, because that's annoying. Stupid Palumu man. I saw. I knew I saw it out of the corner of my eye. Get out of here. Dude. Um. Oh, nice, nice. That's awesome. Okay, cool. Oh, of course, because of his, like, animation, I did not hit his tail. That was really annoying. I was literally... Mm, damn it. Oh, come on, man. Okay. Just completely dodged me. Jump. Okay, we'll stay. Oh, no, it's not good. I think I'm dead. Oh, no. Nope. Nice, that was close. Okay. Sorry, the lack of commentary, just making sure I'm concentrating here. 
Oh, that's gonna... And should hit the wall here. Yep. Come on. I've been hitting the tail for forever. There we go. Goodness me. Okay, there's the tail. Awesome. Alright, so as you can see, it gets a little dicey, but we're doing fine. I still enjoy fighting this thing. Carve the tail there. Cortex, very nice. Alright. Do this, and we will do this. I do like the longsword against this guy because usually I can usually I can telegraph his moves pretty well. But as of right now you can see that I'm not doing the best at doing that. Oh goodness. There we go. All right, I guess that was a quick cycle. Oh yeah, um, the one thing I didn't mention with this guy, um, I don't know if I mentioned it in the voiceover, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, this guy has these, as you saw in the cutscene earlier in the video, there is a, uh, he has got bugs that attach to his fur, which is why he can conduct electricity, that's the, that's the whole reason he can. Um, and you can pick those bugs off of his back, I believe, when he's tipped over. When he's knocked over and he's toppled over, you can absolutely pick those from his back. Very similar to like uh, mining the uh, mining Oregon's back. Very similar. All right, just gonna do this. This is not okay. That ends up working out. One of the horns is broken. Oh, I completely missed. the damage there. Um, I'm going to see if I can do this and wall. Very nice. Oh, there's his slams. He hasn't done that for the whole fight. It's the first time he's done that. Just 
going up. Okay. I could have knocked him into the wall in that last part, but I could, didn't have any slinger on me. Keep it moving up here. Alright, Palumu, please leave. I hate that, dude. The monster, like, mingling gets annoying when you're trying to really just single out somebody. Very sad. So he's now limping. There it is. Alrighty, as you can see, this fight, I mean, I don't, like, I really don't find it that bad. Um, there's way worse fights in the game than this guy. Let's see, is he gonna go to sleep here? I might be able to... Okay, thanks. Do this and this. Oh man, I missed, dude. That's really annoying. See if we can slam this guy into a wall. He's actually not angry. I thought he'd be angry when you woke up. Yep. And wall. I'm gonna do this right away. Horn broken, very nice. Ooh. I thought he was gonna return attack me. Uh oh, I'm stunned. This is gonna hurt. He's probably gonna knock me out here. Yeah. Thank God he didn't time that perfectly, or else I would have been dead here. we go Zenogar has now been slain as you can see my very favorite monster in the entire game I saw I'm sorry if this video was a little more quiet and I didn't commentate as much I just got really like frustrated the fact that I screwed up that part of the recording I totally thought we were gonna fight a different monster and then when I went to go and uh, we went in the Zenogar cutscene I was like oh no I can swap my uh, I can just swap out my armor and stuff real quick. We'll be good to go. And then he just left the locale. I was like, oh, well, now I feel real bad that I completely messed that up. But I hope I made up for it with this fight. Um, again, I know I've said it over and over again. I fought this guy a lot and I should know how this guy fights. But as per usual, um, once you guys like, I, I hope you understand. 
understand if you guys have ever made a video before. You can play the best off camera, and then as soon as you press the record button, you just don't play as well as you do. Like, you just don't. I don't think you do. Because I can hunt this guy in a very reasonable good amount of time off camera. Just, man, that was just really, like... There was a lot of stuff I screwed up, and usually I give this guy the work. The only time this guy gives me the work is when it's freaking um, tempered. So. Alright, to end off the episode, I will go ahead and we will show off the... Um, we will show off all of the armor and weapons and such like that. Looks like the... He's got something to say to us found this in the guiding lens so yeah he's gonna do some augmenting and stuff uh, with the uh, guiding lens materials but going into the armor i'll show you the armor for zenogre it's really cool so here's a uh, zenogre's armor it's really cool i have the this set on my uh main file it's really really neat um here's the zora armor looks pretty cool obviously they're giving it to you because you got to the end game still don't have a uh, Rune or Gigante stuff, but we'll get that eventually. Um, and then we'll go into some of the weapons here. Going into the weapons, let's go to the, uh... Let's see. I believe, yeah, this thing should have a long sword. Is it bone, or is it... Where is the... I thought this thing had a... trying to look through here ah oh, there it is yep i missed it it looks really cool like i really like the hilt on that i like the the sheath on it too as well um the hammer is also very cool i know for a fact it has a hammer um just gotta look for the thunder element ones yeah there it is yeah it's like its face it's like its face it looks really really neat there and then going into it you also have do you have a great sword that's one thing i don't know that if you have i assume you do because there aren't many thunder greatswords in the game so it would make sense that you should have one let me see let's fire yeah there it is it looks pretty good i really like it um and let's look at the uh do you have dual blades i believe you do have dual blades yes you do and they look like the spikes on its back very cool there and then you also should have a switch axe imagine it would be a thunder one right where's their thunder that's fulgur anjanath that's kieran oh i guess maybe for uh switch axe you don't have Oh, no, you do. Yeah, I was going to say, there's no way. Even the glowing parts are really freaking cool on that. Um, and then the last one I'll show, I might as well show like a lance, right? I'll show like a gun lance. Where can we... I assume this thing has a gun lance. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool looking. That looks awesome. Really neat. Alrighty, folks. Um, the one thing we'll end off with this episode is I'll show you something we're going to be doing off screen. Let me go to the quest line because this is one quest I'll be doing off screen so that we can actually get uh, Ancient Forest Level 3. So if you're playing along, between now and next episode, you should get your Guiding Lands uh, Forest Region up to Level 3. Um, but I got an optional quest right here. Um, where is it? Is it this was it level no is it level three there's no way it's level is it level two where is it i just got that quest i literally just got it um let me see if it's just me do i need to talk back to the field team leader because i totally thought i got that quest Or is it in the... Oh, it might be assigned. That's my bad. Yeah, I think it's assigned, actually. My bad. So we'll go here. Go into assigned. It's going to be assigned. Yep. So... When we get this quest going, um, this quest will allow us to increase the levels that we can do on the... Uh, 
the regions in general. This, I believe, allows us to go uh, up to level 3 for all of the regions. So this is one of those quests I was telling you about that uh, levels up your guiding land. So you're going to want to get to Master Rank 49 if you haven't already. The reason I'm already there instantly is because of how much I've been hunting off screen. I've been hunting a lot of stuff off screen. Um, specifically a lot of Devil Joe. I mean, I mean, just been hunting everything. I'm just hunting a lot of everything off screen. Which is why this file at this point, I think this file is around like 200 hours i think and my main files are 359 so you guys can see how much i've been playing this game this like i don't know if there's a way to show like your play time but yeah i just wanted you guys to know that i've been hunting a lot off screen so unfortunately there's been stuff i haven't been able to do have been able to do like i said i do things i wasn't able to do i i this episode was a complete mess but i hope you guys were able to still enjoy it and hope you were able to still follow along with it but i'm very happy with how it, it went at the end so what are you gonna do you know you, you screw up and you just make the best of it right so our next objective is to get the Ancient Forest region in the Guiding Lands to level 3, and then we will get our next majorly assigned quest, which will allow us to fight a new monster that we have not encountered before, which was the one I initially expected us to fight uh, at the beginning of this episode. So, next time on Monster Hunter World, we will be fighting that monster. And so... I think that's it for the episode, so thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please like, comment, rate, and subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And also follow me in the socials. Those will be linked in the description below. And with that, guys, and once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this episode. And I'll catch you on the next one. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace. High ambitions in the right mind can take you so far. It's like you lived a few lifetimes.